And thank you very much. We'll, be, we'll hear from Gwen from time to time as the Leopards will control the tap with Neil Quinn, the seven-footer, getting the tip. As Lafayette will start, Tyrone Perry, Kyle Jenkins, C.J. Fulton, Leo O'Boyle, and Neil Quinn. You're going to see a lot of pressure man-to-man -man defense on the perimeter. Sacred Heart's going to try to take Lafayette out of their offense. That usually means take away their three. There you get a look at the Sacred Heart starters. Brought to you by Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza. And the Leopards are on the board, John. And that's a good start. Fran O'Hannon, I had a chance to talk to him before the game. He wants to see Neil Quinn be more aggressive around the bucket. That's a great start. Lafayette in a 2-3 zone, Gary. I think to mitigate some of that quickness that Sacred Heart brings. Quinn is one guy that maybe they don't match up with very well. As you get a look at the Leopard starters, they can throw up the threes, and that one is knocked down. That's Alex Watson with his ninth triple of the year. And the lead now belongs to Sacred Heart. Yeah, you saw the dribble along the baseline. That's dribble penetration that resulted in the kick out and the three. And Lafayette will turn the ball over on a bad pass. When you look at Sacred Heart, Aaron Clark, 14.8 points a game. He missed the first couple of ball games. When he is back in this lineup, they are a much different basketball team. Tyler Thomas, interesting story, leads the nation in shots taken. Yeah, well, yeah. 129 of them, and they have only played seven games. Well, I've heard about your reputation, and he all of a sudden has become the, your favorite player. He's a man after my own heart. <laughs> Never saw a shot he didn't like. Turnover by the Leopards, they, they have to mitigate turnovers. Well, they're back to man-to-man -man now, so they played zone once. Now C.J. Fulton has the job of trying to stop Tyler Thomas. Way outside, that triple is too long, nice rebound. For Lafayette, but Kyle Jenkins. A little stagnant on offense with Sacred Heart that time. They got to get back defensively. That one doesn't go for Leo, but the rebound, it's going to be controlled by Lafayette. Ooh. Yes, yeah, CJ. I uh, didn't like that call. Neither did, uh, neither did CJ. Lafayette, of course, coming off two very impressive victories as they beat uh, Rutgers 53-51 on a game-winning triple by Kyle Jenkins. And then they came and they just destroyed Columbia. Columbia never in the ball game, 73 to 50. Yeah, Lafayette played very well against Columbia. Yeah, don't be fooled by Lafayette's two and four record. Remember Syracuse and Duke were on that schedule and Penn was, is, oh, that's a walk. Penn is uh, certainly having themselves a pretty good season already. Well, we got one uh, skin on the wall with our big win over Rutgers. So uh, Lafayette's a work in progress. We've heard Fran O'Hanlon talk about it quite a bit. Got a couple of new pieces, especially at the guard spot, to work in. Well, against Columbia, they had four guys in double figures, and uh, that's kind of what you're going to see all year. They won't have that Justin Jaworski-type player who will score 30 maybe in a game, but uh, they'll get four guys with 10, 12, 14 points. They got a shot at beating anybody. Yeah, you're going to see Lafayette run its system, more of a passing game. You're probably going to see Sacred Heart do more off the dribble. Tyrone Perry, he'll take that three. He leads the team in threes, that one no. And the rebound came right down to Tyler Thomas. Thomas hasn't taken a shot yet, so it's about time. My goodness, that's <laughs> gotta be a record. He averages about 20 a game. 17 foot jumper and that one is dropped. All the points belong to Alex Watson so yeah. far. Someone that was flying high on the radar, obviously it's Watson. And there you see the quickness defensively. You don't see that shot get blocked very often by Jenkins and the transition. Nice running of that fast break. Nico Gallette puts the ball down for the bucket. Gary, nice pass that time from Bryce Johnson. Yeah, I'm sorry, Gary. That, it was a blocked shot, but it, was, it had the same effect as a turnover because it created transition opportunity. 18 feet away doesn't go. Neal ends up with it because of Kyle Jenkins. They need one. Can't get it. Jenkins again. He got fouled. And they're going to give the ball to Lafayette. Probably could very easily have called a foul right there. And since the ball was going out of bounds, they decided not to penalize the player. Get the ball outside. And that one's off the mark. Quinn got to be a little careful about going over the top. Slap the ball out of bounds. It will be Pioneer basketball. Pioneers are coached by Anthony Latina. He is in his ninth season, 101-146. Eight years as an assistant under Dave Bike here at Sacred Heart, who was here for 35 years. Most conference wins in the last three years, and he got his 100th win at LaSalle. 
Well, he's done a terrific job there, and he, 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 you know, he really he gets his kind of player. And as you see, Gary, they don't start anybody more than six five, or I'm sorry, six six. But they're athletic, they're quick. They're coming off a five point loss to NJIT. Ooh, that's offensive. NJIT is a team we will see on Sunday afternoon at two o'clock when Lafayette takes on NJIT. The women will take on NJIT on Saturday at two o'clock. We'll have that ball game for you. Very early on in the scheduling process, we saw that as a Sunday double header, an old fashioned double header. And for some reason it was changed over. So we'll see the women on Saturday, the men on Sunday. I thought it was because the Browns were playing. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> That's the first thing I checked. Yeah. <laughs> Lafayette can't make anything right now. Not a bad shot by Neil. The Leopards are uh, one, one for seven so far. Baseline, nothing. Good defense. I'm not sure that pass was supposed to go there, but it ended up in the right hands. There's Tyler Thomas up and in. Boy, that's a tough finish over Quinn. He's averaging 20.1 points a game. He leads the conference in scoring. 16 threes leads the team, 18 assists and 12 steals. So he does it all. Whoa, way outside, Tyrone Perry. And that's what Fran needs from Tyrone. Not necessarily that shot, but he needs big plays at key moments. He's the senior leader of this team. Thinking about it was Watson. Watson's been hot. He puts up another one. Wow. Alex Watson with eight points. He averages eight points. Yeah, and we're about four minutes into this game, so uh, that's a he, I, safe when, to say he may surpass his average tonight. Well, when you read about him, he is their best perimeter defender, not offensive player. There's Neil Green, the nation, in free throw shooting, so they're right there again. And, in fact, Neil probably just put him over 80% with his made foul shot 12-8. Bringing the ball up the floor is Aaron Clark. He's been quiet so far. Gallette gives it up. That's Watson. Watson's been the guy that's done all the scoring so far. Clark. Clark went baseline, had outside shot. That one is dropped by Gallette. You expect him to be inside. That's his eighth triple of the year. They have three threes already. Yeah, and, and they came in shooting 33. That's John Brantley. Can't get it to go. One and done for the Leopards. Nice quick release by Brantley, just did not fall. Tomas Verbinskis is in the game for Lafayette. Nice pass, nothing inside. It's hard to shoot the ball over Neil Quinn. Yeah, well, okay. well this time it's uh, Rabio. Yeah, Rabio, 6'10", and, and uh, that's, that's what Fran's got him in there for, not only to save Neil Quinn from foul trouble, but to guard the rim. Ty Tyrone has it blocked, flying through the air. That time was Tyler Thomas. That's the second three they've blocked. Boy, they don't waste any time, do they? He thought he had that one again as uh, Watson started going the other way. Number 30 out there is Contavio Dutrell. Way outside, a one that is dropped by Clark. Boy, they're really sharing the basketball. That's an extra opportunity. That's a long shot, long rebound, and Sacred Heart's quickness chases down the three, and so often, you see those three-point opportunities come off of offensive rebounds. John, they're four for six from beyond the arc. Brantley, no, he can't get it to fall. The Lafayette not shooting well at all. They are three for 13. They are one for eight from beyond the arc, and just the opposite for the Pioneers. They are seven for 10 from the floor, four of six from beyond the arc. You, you know, again, Lafayette is a team that is built around that three-point shot, there's no question, but that three-point shot is a lot more difficult when you can't throw it inside. I think they've got to start, whether it's Neil Quinn or anybody else, this is unbelievable. Wow. Wow. That is the fifth triple of the first quarter, first half. And we aren't halfway through the first half of the ball game. See this. It's been just the opposite for the Leopards. They haven't been able to make anything. Well, the, the ball pressure is, look how quick they are defensively. There's a no. I thought he was going to take it all away. He didn't have to. Rabio, no. Rabio will get fouled on the play. Got hit in the head. Now, we talked about the fact that Sacred Heart comes in with no one over 6'6 six, six or 6'7. Six, but they are so strong. And look at the spring defensively. That was uh, Cantavio Dutrell on the defensive denial right there, and Rabio will go to the line. 
fourth foul on Sacred Heart as a team. That was on Dutrell, as John mentioned. Rabio is two for three from the foul line this season and does not get that one to fall. With the absence now of Sean Good, who has left the program, Rabio is going to get a lot more work. And, and, and again, I was talking to Coach O, and he'd like to bring Chris along a little more slowly, but he doesn't have that luxury right now with, with the absence of Sean Good. So the learning curve has changed dramatically for Chris Rabio. Chris played for Puerto Rico in the under 19 category. His career high came against Columbia when he had six points and three rebounds. Gary, they are so quick off the dribble that time. Aaron Clark in transition. And it was a mismatch because he was matched up on the perimeter with Leo O'Boyle. And Leo has to hold him as he's driving baseline. That's Lafayette's first foul of the first half. He'll start with Aaron Clark. Running around is Mike Sixsmith. He is from Hicksville, New York. So we're number three from the corner. Put up, not dropped, hit back of iron. A basket no good by Bryce Johnson. And that will not go for Verbinskis. Leopards are just awful right now, 21% from the floor. It's not their game. Well, you see how much Aaron Clark means to this basketball team. Drive baseline, he stopped as Joey Riley. You may remember Joey Riley. He is a transfer who played the last two years at Holy Cross. And again, and losing by an average of one point. Lafayette will take that right now to win or lose by one. They certainly would rather put the W in the column. Close to a From the outside, that shot taken by Joey Riley. That doesn't go. Joey's played here before. So he was familiar with that spot on the floor. Not a bad looking shot, but finally got the feeling that everything Sacred Heart was throwing up was going in. Quinn, Fulton. Fulton, nice hesitate. Way outside, Tyrone again, not this time. Strong rebound by Dutrell. Dutrell's been doing a nice job. We talked about Gillette, and he will be a factor in this game, but right now Dutrell doing a nice job on the interior for Sacred Heart. Looking to go is Sixsmith. Riley. But they love to dribble drive and kick back out. Clark. Drops it down. Nice pass. Clark penetrates. Johnson goes back door. Johnson gets the bucket. Great use of the bounce pass. He just dropped it on the floor. It came right back up to Johnson. Fulton has the whole lane. Oh, it opened up for him. He decided to stop. Well, not a bad choice. Leo Boyle puts down. His 13th, maybe that will get the Leopards started. Yeah, better movement offensively that time. Fulton on the dribble drive, and he kicks it out nicely to the shooter. Clark again drops it down. A lot of movement in this offense. A lot of it initiated off the dribble. Clark is good at it. Riley drops it down. Johnson loses it. Turnover, that's just their third turnover. Fulton inside, and he's going to get hit, but they don't call any foul as uh, Sixsmith gave him a pretty good shot. That was a clever play by Sixsmith. He got his feet around, watch right here, and then stripes down, uh, scrapes down on the basketball. Good defense in transition. Might have had a foul call, but he was number two in the nation last year, John, in shooting threes, 54%. Wow. Made the all-rookie team in the Northeast Conference. Quinn's going to get hammered. Dutrell commits his second personal foul, team foul number five, and that immediately will get Gallette back into the ball game. Here's the big guy, seven feet tall, and Fran O'Hanlon wants to see him be a factor in this game. Got to throw it down to the post, but Neil Quinn has to present himself to the basketball. He has got to want that ball and demand that uh, his teammates throw it down to him. You see, Neil, that he has certainly uh, taken some weight off in uh, the few years he has been here. Aaron Clark for uh, the Pioneers lost 20 pounds since last year. You get a look at Anthony Latina working the officials a little bit. One out of two for Neal. Lafayette not even shooting foul shots real well. Boy, they love to attack the rim. Joey Riley 
Those two little guys, you know, they give uh, Sacred Heart some great energy off the bench. They're not as big or as athletic as some of these other guards that play, certainly Thomas or Clark, but they're crafty and they get the job done. Joey Riley, he is two for two on the year from the foul line. His perfect record has come to an end. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcers, Jinx. <laughs> Gets the second. The first two foul shots of the game for the Pioneers. They have doubled up the Leopards, 24-12. Oh, Boyle. Oh, no. Now they got numbers. Tyler Thomas. Way outside. That'll be six Smith. Doesn't go. Strong rebound inside. And that does not go for Gallette. Their offensive rebound, though, that's not a good sign. Rebounds right now are 13 to 7. Oh, nice drop. Kyle Jenkins. Nice job that time by the Leopards. You, it's, they're a, Lafayette is a hard team to double up because they move the ball so well. Good hustle. Fulton didn't quite come up with it. Took some seconds off the shot clock, however. Nice pass. Real pretty play. Up and in by Bryce Johnson on the pass from Tyler Thomas. Well, Tyler Thomas, we talked about his love of shooting the basketball. Oh, that's a bad turnover. Johnson down the floor. He'll go end to end and emphatically finish. He's got six. Sacred Heart. You know, I, I've seen them two or three times in anticipation of them coming into here to Kirby. Fran O'Hanlon's going to get it. Binghamton. So he certainly is capable of putting the ball in the basket. You kind of choose your poison, though. If you get up on some of these guys, they are so quick to the basket off the dribble. They're quick defensively, too. Wide open. Oh, Boyle. He's got it. Leo Boyle with a couple of threes. He has six. That's what I'm talking about. That ball went into Lee, uh, to, uh, uh, to Quinn, and they doubled down on him. And as soon as they did that, it left O'Boyle wide open. Got to see more of that. They probably won't do that very often again. Way outside. Tyler Thomas, no. Here comes Tyrone. Drops it off. Fulton, CJ, finds O'Boyle again. He checked. And he does not get it to fall. Mm. That would have been big. Oh, look, nice. And a kick. They're good at driving and kicking, John. That's what they love to do. Here come the Leopards. Got a little bit of an advantage, two on one. Fulton sees it, Fulton up and in. CJ, the freshman. He is a great finisher. He knows he had great, he came here with great experience. You know, he, he's he's more than a freshman experience wise for his, uh, because of his play internationally. Yes, he helped Ireland capture the under 19 World Cup and had a lot of playing time. Boy, you run into Neil Quinn and the, it's like an eclipse. Thomas, no, there's Neil with a rebound. Good job defensively by the Leopards. Oh, nice pass. That's Jank. The play in both the Super Bowl and the World Series. We'll have that answer for you in a bit. Driving to the hoop is Aaron Clark. Tyler Thomas wants to go. He gives it back to Clark. Good ball movement. Driving, Gallette, he gets rid of it. He's going to get fouled on the play. As it looked like some heads banged there. Another great bounce pass in traffic. Not yet fouled before the shot. But uh, I'm, I'm impressed with the way Sacred Heart moves the basketball, Gary. They really they don't do, do anything slowly. No. Thomas picked up by Rabio. He blocks the shot. Nice job, Rabio. Well, he's given Fran O'Hanlon some great minutes at 6'10", long arms. That's probably, it's his second or third block already, and he's changed a couple shots. Seems to have a good understanding, too, of the offense, which is always difficult for a freshman. 10 on the shot clock. Rabinskis is in there, and we're going to get a foul here. This will be on Johnson, his second. And that's the team's sixth. 
So one away from the one and one. And Neil Quinn in. Leo Boyle in. And in for Sacred Heart is Zach Paffenberger. We talked a little bit about Lafayette's lack of depth, but you know, it could be an issue for Sacred Heart with some of the foul trouble we see happening here. Six minutes to go, first half. Game starting to take on, it had a lot of ebb and flow the first time, now it's kind of settled in. Verbinskis, pull up, left-handed shot, does not drop. Gallette runs into Neil Quinn. And that stops any thought of shooting a layup. Yeah, Lafayette's doing a great job on the interior defensively. Clark kicks it out. Gallette for three. No, not this time. Yeah, you, 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 they, they've gotten a little bit more normal. Yeah, exactly. And, and credit Lafayette's defense with protecting the rim and forcing the long shot. Oh, yes. Nothing but nylon. Leo has three of them. Oh, boy, with nine. So again, the ball goes in. It comes back out. It's very difficult to close out on shooters when you also have to defend the post. So the Leopards have stemmed the tide a bit. Down by three after being down by 15. Way outside Gallet. I think, I think they're willing to let him take that shot. Gallet is a 24% three-point shooter. Well, you'll know if they tie the game. The, the house will let you know. Almost the walk. Brantley has it smothered. Well, everybody gave up on the play and... Lafayette did not. Here we go, inside, the big guy. Oh, he got it. Yeah, he got it anyway. Yeah, one way to pad those rebounding he stats. He wanted a rebound. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Fran Hanlon wants to see, though. The ball has to go in and Neil Quinn, and good things gotta ha have to happen. Down by one. Gallette against O'Boyle. Reach in foul, O'Boyle. Leo second, so that's a, uh, the first cloud hanging over the Leopards. Jenkins in, Verbinskis out, Fulton in, and Tyrone out. Boyle's gonna get a breather, keep his legs fresh. Fran loves to go some offense, defense, and now we got Re Verbinskis stayed in because yeah. of the second foul on O'Boyle. Way outside, well, nowhere else to go, so they decided to shoot the ball, did Aaron Clark, and it did not go. Jenkins. Fulton. Rubinskis. Got a little bit bad spacing there, he got away with it, and that'll make them get away with it even more. Hey, guess who's in the lead? The Lafayette Leopards have come all the way back from 15 down. Take their second lead. They led 2-0 when they made the first bucket. That's a great job by the Leopards to kind of keep your cool and just kind of let things settle into uh, the way. It's going to be a close game. Both of these teams are well coached and know how to play. I tell you, Neil Quinn has made a huge difference in the paint. They take it to the hole, and then they run into him, and they have to stop. There's two examples right there. Exactly. Nothing's free on the inside. Oh, they get it away, and that guy has been a destroyer. Alex Watson with 11 points, three threes, and puts his team at 30 all. Sacred Heart desperately needed that because they'd gone dry for a long time. Lafayette playing great defense. Five minutes went by before Sacred Heart put a point on the board. Brantley got banged up there. Down the floor, looking to go. Tyler Thomas up and in. Boy, he's explosive to the bucket, isn't he? Back <laughs> on top. He ran right in front of us. It took him about yeah. one second to get to the rim. Oh, and we'll have all four of those for you. NGIT will be a team somewhat similar to Sacred Heart. I think it'll be a pretty good measuring stick for what we might see come Sunday. This game will be anyway. Clark. Looking for somebody. Clark's trying to get around Fulton. That doesn't happen. Inside and getting off the shot. Somebody's got to find Alex Watson. He's got 13 first half points. His career high is 16. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, we, we were all ready to see uh, Aaron Clark and Tyler Thomas take over offensively, but man, what a first half for Watson. CJ. 
just a bit off the mark. Right there, wouldn't fall. Gallette drops it off to Thomas. Thomas will get a screen, doesn't use it. He really doesn't hunt the three a whole lot, you know? He, he kind of wants to put it on the floor and try to get to the rim. He has 16 of them and leads the team in threes. There he is, where he wants to go. Lafayette not as big as they normally are on the floor with Quinn. Turnover. Wide open. Tyrone, yeah. Oh. He knew it, too. Oh, yeah. He stared it down. Aaron Clark said, oh, no. Yeah. He saw it. He just couldn't get there in time. Tyrone, you give him that much time. He's money. He's on the cover of the program tonight. Pretty good pose. Boy, is he a nice young man. He's Great guy to talk to for a ball game. Everything you want in a point guard and a leader. And a uh, scholar. Mm. Good kid. Speaking of that, we got some news about the Lafayette. Boom. Wow. Oh, wow. Who is this guy? Alex Watson has tied his career high, and we're in the first half. Four threes. He's up to 12 triples on the season. Came in with eight. He's going to stop at Wawa and buy a lottery ticket on his way home. <laughs> wow. This is his night. Down, nice pass, Rabio inside, up and in. That Guess, came from Tyrone Perry. Just gonna say, Tyrone Perry. Tyrone, that's two times down the floor, he's made big plays, one on the pass and one on the shot. I am liking Chris Rabio more and more as we see him out on the floor. From Skillman, New Jersey, 6'10", 210, he's a freshman. Sacred Heart will get the last shot here and they're gonna take one, I don't think we're in the bonus yet. That's the sixth. That's the I six. What? CJ gave the foul. He is so smart. That young man right there, he's a freshman. He's going to have an unbelievable career here. But that was his second foul. Yeah. So, no, but, that's not good. But that gets an eh out of John, so I guess it yeah. wasn't that important. <laughs> eh. Well, eh, he's smart enough. He's smart enough. John's vocabulary continues to increase. <laughs> <laughs> eh. well, you're the English teacher. I've been hanging around you all, all these years. Uh, get the shot off. Oh, my. is that like he doesn't watch the Browns? <laughs> <laughs> Saturday afternoon. Is that <laughs> yeah, no, I thought that's what. <laughs> it's Clark Johnson, Thompson, Thomas, Watson, and Gallette. It's Jenkins, Fulton, Perry, O'Boyle, and Quinn. Both teams with their starting lineup. And Tyler Thomas loses the basketball. Nobody's going to stop. Neil O'Boyle missed the shot. Oh, my. Jenkins got up on that one. Wow. He did. Tried to find Neil Quinn. Well, that's two the Leopards could have had easily. Now they're going to have to work for it. Well, they, you know, Tyler Thomas, he, he is well scouted because they're really taking away. You see the almost huge finish by Jenkins. They couldn't get it to go down. Jenkins with the ball. The Leopards will uh, rue that possession if they don't get two points here. Well, they'll get two points right there. I think Neal's going to be the key to Lafayette winning or losing this game. Yeah, they got to, they got to throw the ball into him and, and get get it to him in a position where he can do that. Sacred Heart really doesn't have an answer for him around the rim. He has 10 points inside, up and in. Basket by Johnson. Johnson's had a good ball game. He has eight. Sacred Heart has really spread things around. They've shown great balance. You know, the guys you thought were going to do all the scoring haven't. Johnson only averages six. He has eight. Good rebound, Jenkins. Well, Neal's wide open. They found him, and he'll get hammered. Aaron Clark will commit the foul. Should be a two-shot foul. Now, I'm not exaggerating. You know I'm uh, prone to hyperbole. Whoa. Aaron Clark was given up about a foot and a half. <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, and so he had no choice. Tackle him. <laughs> make him. Make him shoot free throws. That was uh, not a place where Aaron Clark wanted to be. But you said it, you know, uh, Neil Quinn comes out, first three points here of the. I've spent nights talking to Neil's chest. <laughs> there you get a look at coach. You won't see him sitting very often. He's taking a rest during the two foul shots. It's way down at the other end, yeah, too. Yeah, he's at the end of the bench. That's not like coach. Maybe he lost some friends. Thomas. And no, he can't buy a basket so far. And I hesitate saying that because he'll get hot. Leopards down three. Again, they look for Quinn. Johnson trying to yeah, Neil get is, in position. He's working real hard on the inside. Uh, Tyson. 
Tyrone threw it away. Thought he was going to set up a three for somebody, and not sure who that was intended for. But you can see how hard Neil Quinn is working on the inside. And yeah, right here, you know, Fran calls that soar and explore. Don't leave your feet unless you know where it's going. <laughs> Tyrone got up off his feet and he had to get rid of that pass. Clark, Johnson. Johnson averages six, he's got eight. He's got it again, thought about it, ran right into Aaron Clark. That's clearly not his game. Five on the shot clock, somebody's got to put it up. Clark will drive, put it up, and not get it, but they'll get the rebound. Oh, my. Aaron Clark finishes with a three. Bryce Johnson with the offensive rebound that gave Clark the extra look. And knocked down <laughs> by Leo Boyle, his fourth triple. I'm laughing because I saw Aaron Clark look right over the bench and Boy, Coach Latina is saying, you don't go under. I know, Coach, that's what it said in the scouting report, but I forgot. Thomas, that one's pretty easy, and he doesn't get it. Neither does the dunk follow-up there a little bit. <laughs> he stayed on the uh, chair down there, but he's up now. Well, it has been a seesaw. Sacred Heart off to the big start, and Lafayette coming back nicely. Leo, nice move. Gets knocked down, no call. Lafayette will end up with it. C.J. Fulton up and in. How about that finish? C.J. Oh, up and man. under. Are they calling a foul too? They're calling that on Leo O'Boyle. Let's take a look lower side of the screen right here. I'm not sure what he did. I'm not sure either. Was it a warning or was it a foul? I have not heard... The, a foul being called. Was that a, a kind of a taunting type thing? I, I don't know. Congratulating his teammate. Hmm. Well, it didn't, uh, nothing appeared on the scoreboard. Yeah. So I assume it was a warning. Leo's coming right back in. And the Leopards down by one. Boy, this is quite a matchup. Perry and Clark. Clark now with Verbinskis on him. Gallette, Gallette working on Perry. Johnson, stole it. Boy, Fulton is quick. He really is. He has quick hands. Drops it off for Binskis up and in from C.J. Fulton. He's quick and smart defensively and so creative at the offensive end. That's a perfectly executed two-on-one. Our fourth lead change. Tyrone almost, almost took it away from Clark. Way outside, Tyler Thomas, no. That was an NBA triple. Yeah, and, and Tyler Thomas is completely out of rhythm right now. Kyle Jenkins, good ball movement. They got Tyrone, no. Can't get that one that brings the house down. Yeah, but you saw that was a great possession. You saw that it starts, it starts with that, uh, that pass to the inside. Johnson, nope. Fulton with a rebound. Johnson had to take that shot. They're giving him that shot, and he just doesn't seem to want to take it. Tyrone, no. Oh, nice. Jenkins inside. No. Jenkins, no. Jenkins back outside. They'll start it over. Oh, pretty play. Oh, what a pass. He had Delaware men's basketball at 7. As that uh, is coming up, and Princeton will have the following Saturday. UMBC also in there. Well, we got a lot of bodies. Not quite sure who the foul's on here. But he uh, had a number of injuries throughout his career here. He's a senior now. And in fact, missed the first couple, missed the first three games this season. And he is an important cog in this lineup. 48-47. Ooh. The slimmest of leads. Brantley with a little bobble. Brantley, he loves to put it up. Doesn't get it. And the rebound controlled by Cantavio Dutrell. He was fairly active in the first half was Cantrell. Getting his first look here in the second half. Bobby has done a good job defensively. They, they kind of funnel everything to Quinn. And that sort of ends the offense. 
It certainly does help the defense when you've got a seven foot rim, rim protector. Gary's throwing the ball to you. Well, you unlike were Tyler Thomas, <laughs> <laughs> I was ready. <laughs> But again, to your point, that's exactly what Lafayette did, did defensively that time. You funnel that ball inside, you've got big Neil Quinn in there to protect the rim and forces an errant pass. That's the eighth turnover by Sacred Heart. Not a lot in this ball game. Lafayette's only turned it over five times. Quinn will get it. That's where everything begins. Quinn maybe get it back, he does not. Instead, Leo, that's short. Down the floor on a quick break is Sixsmith, you put it up and in. Mike hey. Sixsmith on a nice pass from Clark. It was an understated finish because Leo O'Boyle at 6'7", had about six inches. Another great pass by Quinn. Oh, there's a foul. <laughs> Grabbing the arm is Aaron Clark, his second foul. Oh. Just the second team foul. How about the pass by Quinn though, Gary? Across the court, he just gets his head around. His head's always on a swivel. And he's the one that created that foul. He found Leo O'Boyle diagonally across the lane on the, on the baseline. Upside, Kyle Jenkins. Kyle with just five points tonight. He's been somewhat quiet. Ooh, that wasn't a bad pass. Brantley never, never caught it. And now the foul on Kyle Jenkins. Well, the spacing wasn't quite right. I think Neil would have been better served to kind of fake that pass. He was too close uh, to uh, to the cutting Brantley. And yeah, pass a little high and hard. Yeah. You there see it, it right here, yeah. Just a little, a little too spacing, not quite right. Rabio back in. Quinn will get a rest. Trying to do something, Gallette. He ends up having to get rid of it. There goes Gallette again. This time he does get rid of it to Six Smith. That doesn't go, and Kyle Jenkins rebound. Again, great defense by the Leopards. They're kind of closing out on the first one, forcing the extra pass and getting Sacred Hurt out of rhythm. Perry. Perry's going to put it up. Oh, it doesn't go. He does not miss that shot very often. Halfway down, another great look. Riley gives it up outside. Clark, Aaron Clark hits a triple. That one's big, his fourth of the game. Guards love that shot straight on. You know, in the old days, we used to say the corner jump shot was the easiest one. I'm not so sure. Boy, when they line it up at the top of the key, and we know he can shoot free throws, and same shot, just a little further out. Great finish by Clark. Clark now has 14, his average 14.8. Look at this mismatch down low. They got Boyle if they want him. Got him a little late. They got it to him too late. He was open and uh, Kyle kind of stared him down, but never quite got the ball to him. Yeah, up until just a few moments ago, Lafayette had five turnovers, Gary. They, they seem to have turned it over a couple of times now. 52-48, Sacred Heart back up by four. The largest lead for Lafayette, two. Sacred Heart, of course, led by 15 at one point. Ooh, almost lost. Drive. That one was over Neil Quinn by Aaron Clark. How about the spin he put on that ball, but quickly Sacred Heart got numbers. We need one. No. Oh, look at that rebound. Neil running the floor. Practices and plays like he never had that injury in the first place, and I hope it stays that way. Back to you guys. Just came in from out of bounds and to catch the ball, but I think if you reestablish yourself inbounds, it's not a turnover. Sure, if we're going to get another look at it, but Tyro was surprised by it. So was Fran O'Hanlon. He definitely ran along the baseline, but I never thought he went out of bounds the whole way. When talking about Tyrone's career high, 25 against Cornell, now they need some stops. Lafayette down by six. Can't let this one get away from them. Sacred Heart back to shooting the ball well. They're at 50% and 43 from beyond the arc. Lafayette at 37 and just 30%. It's going to be a shot clock violation. Great defense by the Leopards. And you know, Gary, teams eventually will revert back to their what they do. And I'm not sure that Sacred Heart, you see they 
They want to penetrate off the dribble. They want to penetrate. Lafayette's taking that away from them, forcing the extra pass. They're protecting the rim. And uh, Fran O'Hanlon cannot be upset with the defense. I think they're defending Sacred Heart very well. That was Quinn again. We'll mess things up for them. They need one. Kyle Jenkins. No. Back of iron. Won't go. Leopards have gone a bit cold. Joey Riley with the ball. A lot of these players, well, not a lot in this game, but players with that extra year of eligibility because of COVID, they've taken advantage of moving to different programs, and that's exactly what Joey Riley did. Clark. Way outside Gallette. That won't go. And there's Quinn again. Yeah, nice job. Again, you see that they kind of, they kind of have to take the three-pointer when nothing else is available. Kyle Jenkins quietly has 11 rebounds in the game. Quinn has seven. And he's probably shaking loose about seven more. Gallette will go out. Leopard's been cold here for a bit. Last field goal at the 15 to 18 mark. That isn't oh bad. Oh my. Ha! Oh. High percentage? Yeah, I would say so. Look at the spin move. The footwork is unbelievable. For a guy seven feet tall, watch the spin move on the baseline. Man, he just takes that first step, and that's the aggression that Fran O'Hanlon was looking for. Dutrell picks up his third foul. And Neal will go to the line and try to complete a three-point play. That's a spin move a la seven-foot style. Missed the foul shot. Four out of six from the line. He and Rabio, the only ones for Lafayette that have gone to the foul line. That tells you something about their outside game. Well, that's a bad shot by Dutrell. So the Leopards coming back again. How about how quiet Tyler Thomas has been. He's sitting over on the bench next to Coach Latina. Up and in. Pretty move. Tyrone is as clever as they come. Really is. Got such a great touch around the basket. Scores a lot of different ways. Good ball game. 54-52. Way outside. And that does not fall from Six Smith. Here come the Leopards. Fulton. Kyle Jenkins. And it's going to be a... Could be a blocking foul because I'm sure. Yeah, I think he was in. Yes. Yeah. If you're inside the semicircle, you cannot get an offensive foul. And he's inside the semicircle. Yeah, no question about it. Good call by the officials, and they're getting more and more used to that too. When that uh, rule was first implemented, instituted, you saw it missed more often than not. And uh, with anything else, the striped shirters had to get used to it too. That was the fourth foul, by the way, on Dutrell. Fifth team foul. And Jenkins will go to the line. He is four for seven on the year. So he hasn't spent very much time there. He can tie the game up. Lafayette wow. uncharacteristically. Four, four for time. nine. Yeah, Dan. that is not Lafayette-like. And I'm looking over at number 22 on the Sacred Heart bench, wondering when we might see him again. Lafayette has done a great job keeping him under wraps. And if you had told me coming into this game that Tyler Thomas would be as quiet as he has been, I'd really like Lafayette's chances. You can't even hesitate saying that because that usually Set yeah. somebody off. Ooh, almost a walk there. Good ball movement, but good ball, good movement by the Lafayette defense. Yeah. Again, the Gallette three. Gallette doesn't hesitate taking threes. Johnson has been a thorn tonight. Johnson with 10 points, came in averaging six. Yeah, but look at his rebounds, Gary. I think he's got three or four offensive. I mean, he really has been a, he seems to come down with every loose ball around the rim. They only have him for three, but that doesn't always mean that's yeah. all he's had. Fulton. Leopard's down by three. Or he are they tied? Wow! They are tied. 
That's deep. That's deep. He was on John Leone's lap. I know. 56 <laughs> all. Second tie of the game. Rabio, they're going to call him with a body. Fran didn't like the call. Rabio with his first foul. Aaron Clark is so good at getting to the rim, and you, you saw him kind of invite that contact. Rabio did get him with the body. He is their leading scorer, believe it or not. Watson has not scored in the second half. I haven't even seen him all that much. He's coming in now. For all the points we had in the first half, Sigmund had 40 at halftime, Lafayette 35. So we're looking at 21 to 16 here in the second half. 21 17 now. Clark now with 17. Here you get a look at head coach Anthony Latina. Nine seasons as the head coach. He's got a passionate guy. Another rebound for Quinn. Well, the Leopards with this chance to take the lead. Ooh, a little trap going on here by the Sacred Heart Pioneers. Nope. Brantley so far with the, uh, the collar. He's 0 for 5. He had Quinn. He could have dropped that one down. Decided to take it. Brantley is considered a good outside shooter. Just haven't quite seen it this year. Tyler back in the game. How do you make that shot? Wow. How do you make that shot? Tyler Thomas. Oh, my. I, I wish I hadn't mentioned his name. Maybe. Uh, I was going to say, I'm going to kick you. In maybe there. Latina <laughs> is tuned into our broadcast, and he had forgotten about him. 59-56. Perry. Brantley. That's where they need to go. Yeah, why yes. not? Oh, oh my, no. that's a second dunk. Mm. Kyle Jenkins has missed two dunks in this game. That's Charles. tough. That was the valedictorian <laughs> of my summer school class. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, watch out. They got two on one. Ah. What's it doing? Down by three. Starting lineup on the floor right now for both teams. They're giving a lot of help on the inside to Neil Quinn. He's got an advantage. Got to make a play. So he does. Nice. Mm. Ooh, easy finger roll. Wouldn't go. Point blank right there. You know, the ball went in, but Lafayette became a little stationary on the perimeter. You know, usually you see some perimeter screening and some movement. That's Clark. Had a good ball game. Good all-around game. O'Boyle on him. That's Ty Tyler Thomas. Not his typical game tonight. Clark, down to two on the shot clock. Johnson almost, oh, and they get the rebound. Long shot, long rebound. Yeah. Thomas inside, up and under, that's pretty. Boy, he finds a way, doesn't he, Gary? Against the seven-footer. Against Quinn, yeah. yeah. Quickly down the floor. Now, now keep moving. I like the movement on the perimeter now, much better. Quinn wants to go. He does, he'll get another chance. Neal with a bucket, he's got 16. Career high 22. I like the patience though. You know, he's got the size advantage. He's, you know, he's got a good touch from around the rim. No reason to rush in that time, he just laid it in. I also like the fact that he went right back at it after missing the, the first one. Well, the Leopards are not shooting well from the line. Five out of 11. And that's a number you look at if you lose a ball game. It's a little drop pass. They lost it. That time they tried to drop a smooth little pass to Gallette. Well, you know what? I don't mind the pass at all. I mean, the ball came. It was just, I think it was good defense. Lafayette got a hand on it. Something a little tough for a big guy to yeah. handle and bounce past that close to him. I think spacing, you're right. I think spacing was the issue there. A lot of exchanges here. Lafayette moving the ball nicely. Little three on three game. Now they get it. Kyle Jenkins. Oh, that was right there and would not fall. 
Bryce Johnson again. That's a big rebound down the stretch right here with a three-point lead. He's got six of them. Clock keeps ticking, 4.54. Well, good reach around. Fulton can play defense. Yeah, he really can. He is so smart. He's got quick hands. Quinn? Yeah, he can play offense. Good job. Not, Quinn's got 18. Yeah, not an accident right there. He can make that shot. And that's a big one. Cuts it to one. Eight rebounds, 18 points. Neal's career high, 22. Uh, to reach in foul on Jenkins. His second, team's fourth, non-shooting. You know, even though Aaron Clark gets in the lane like that, you know, you don't want to foul him there because he's driving the ball against those big Lafayette defenders on the inside. Make him make a play, you don't bail him out with a foul, but easier said than done, he's so quick. Verbinskis in, Rabio in, O'Boyle out, and Neil Quinn out. Gillette against Jenkins. Trying to create space. No, out of bounds. It'll be Lafayette ball. Pretty good defense by Jenkins. And right away, Lafayette comes back with Quinn and O'Boyle for offense. Nice job defensively by Rabio and company. Verbinskis on the inside to deny them. The dead ball allows Fran to go back to the offense. Down by one. Looking oh, for that's, guess who? So that's been the MVP tonight for the Pioneers. And Bryce Johnson with a dozen points. And every time, it seems like the timing is everything. Critical moments when Lafayette has a chance to take the lead or cut into it. He stops the flow. Quinn. Johnson on him. Got it. I think that's the answer right there. You got to keep going to the well. Sooner or later, Lafayette, or, uh, Sacred Heart's got to double down on him, and that's when Quinn can find open people. He has 20. Inside, Thomas up and in. Latino desperately he wanted, wanted a foul. foul didn't he, he sure did. Boy, he can finish around the bucket, can he? And it's actually more impressive in the paint. Oh, my goodness. Than he's been so far from the outside. Again, it's a three-point deficit. Oh, two, that, they got lucky. Yeah. Johnson. Johnson was there. Fulton. Nine on the shot clock. Oh, nice move. And he lost the ball. Nothing That's from the line. Down by three. They have ten turnovers to 12 by Sacred Heart. It's an incredible number. Look at the defense that Tyrone Perry is playing on Clark. Watson gives it up. Gillette. Eight to shoot now. Oh Nobody boy. in the paint. Look who's got the ball. I think he's gone into the paint. Step back and no. And the rebound ended up somehow on Perry. Oh, Rabio running the floor from Tyrone Perry. Chris Rabio. That's a great job by the youngster. A freshman, Gary, running the floor, rewarded by the senior point guard. Lafayette cuts it to one. 120 seconds to go. Way up, and this guy, that's his first bucket in the second half. 15 first half points, now has 17. Okay. Uh, you ever look at my stats? No, never. Do you, <laughs> you, do all yeah. that, you do all that work, and I just wing it. <laughs> Neil Quinn. Neil. Make a move, Neil. Looking to tie his career high. Oh, telegraphed it. Oh, they lost the ball. Huge they, turnover. Yeah, they telegraphed. They wanted it to go inside, uh, but Kyle Jenkins kind of just measured that pass, and the defense measured right along with him. Huge possession now by the Pioneers. Yeah, they get one here. Five points with under a minute. They take it to 10. Now they'll look for Thomas. Five, Thomas in the paint. Thomas. They're gonna count it and call the foul on Quinn. 
I, I just don't know how he gets that ball off. But great players make big plays at key moment. Look at this finish right here. I mean, there's absolutely no angle at all. Neil Quinn frustrated. But don't worry about it, young fella. This kid. Uh, yeah, he's not the first one. Though. No. You don't, you don't come at, in averaging his numbers. Oh, what a big play. Could go up by six here. And they do. Yep. Sacred Heart's got to defend the three, and Lafayette got to run good offense here. Tyler Thomas with nine second half points. Huge if it goes. They don't have a center in there right now, but a quicker unit. Johnson with the ball. And they're making the big guy handle it. Yeah, he wants to get rid of it too. And he does. Here comes Thomas. Good job by Johnson to negotiate that pressure. They were not going to let the guards bring the ball up the floor. Lafayette does not want a foul. They want a missed shot. Eight on the shot clock. Thomas wants to go in the middle. There he goes. In the middle. Step back. Puts it up. Oh, my. You can't fault clutch, the defense. Clutch, clutch, clutch. You can't fault the defense. Clippers need a... Jenkins for three. No. Oh. My, that's a, that's a tough one. I'll tell you what. Tyler Thomas... You know, they did everything they had to do to keep him at bay. There was the uh, That's a one they had to give as you get a look at the Thomas shot. Yeah, 14 seconds now. Tough situation, Lafayette down by five. Yeah, they got a foul now. And, of course, uh, all the best free throw shooters are going to be on the floor for Coach Latina. So Sacred Heart... Comes in here on a three-game losing streak, and it looks like their trip back to Fairfield, Connecticut will be a little bit more pleasant. Tyrone Perry, the automatic foul. That's team foul number seven. And it will send Aaron Clark to the line, who is now 21 for 26 from the foul line. And Coach Latina is going to immediately put Johnson back in the game right here. He would be my MVP tonight as far as Sacred Heart's concerned. Yeah, I mean, it, there, there's enough accolades to go around. Obviously, Clark did a, Clark did a great job. And, and of course, uh, down the stretch, Tyler Thomas was, he became Tyler Thomas. But you're right, I agree with you, Gary. Every time Sacred Heart needed a big play, whether it was an offensive rebound, a defensive rebound, we are the Lafayette Sports Network. Give credit where it's due. Sacred Heart basketball team is pretty good. Tyrone cannot quite get it, and that should do it. It will be Sacred Heart ball, and the Leopards, I think, will back up. No reason to commit a foul here. And this one will be a 74-67 final. 